The coronavirus pandemic has come with one unintended but welcome consequence, the decline in carbon dioxide emissions. Our own climate expert, Jeff Berardelli, explains why those carbon emissions have such a drastic effect on Earth's climate. Carbon dioxide makes up a tiny portion of our atmosphere, but because it traps heat, CO2 has an outsized influence, keeping Earth's temperature at a comfortable 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's so powerful that if all carbon dioxide vanished abruptly, Earth's temperature would plummet 60 degrees in just 16 years, turning the Earth into an ice ball and eradicating most life. However, since the 1800s, carbon dioxide has done the opposite, rising at an alarming rate, and that's because of our addiction to burning fossil fuels. The last time carbon dioxide reached this level was three million years ago. Giant camels roamed the Canadian Yukon. Sea levels were 75 feet higher than today, and coastal cities would have been infested with a different type of shark. Here's the rub. During that time, Earth's average temperature was only four degrees warmer than today, and that's possible again in several decades if we don't take drastic action. Oceans would once more swamp our cities, and we'll definitely need a bigger boat. And CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli joins me now. Uh, Jeff, good to see you. Uh, what changes are we seeing in the environment as uh, people remain confined to their homes? And are the changes that we're seeing, are those long term? Mm, they're not likely long term, unfortunately. Uh, what we're seeing are great changes in the environment, but we're paying a heavy price for that. Uh, pollution has gone down around 30 to 40 percent, but the air quality is wonderful. The water quality is wonderful. And carbon dioxide is projected to go down the emissions by around five or six percent this year. Now, it may sound like a lot. That's a record. We've never gone down that fast that far before in such a short period of time. However, it's not really that much. Because in order to reach our goals in the Paris Agreement, keeping the Earth's temperature rise less than two degrees Celsius, so about three to four degrees Fahrenheit, we need to do five or six percent reductions year over year over year. And Elaine, that is just not acceptable. We cannot close down the economy. No one wants to do that. No one suggests that we should. We can't all stop working for two or three months at a time. And so it goes to show you how Herculean this task is going to be to change our economy over, to change our way of life over from fossil fuels to solar and wind so that we can limit this warming and, aver and avoid the worst uh, effects of climate change and the climate crisis. We have a lot of work to do. So at the moment, the environment may be benefiting, but how is the pandemic affecting climate action? Well, obviously, you know, a lot of these students that normally do these Friday climate strikes can't do them outside, but they're still doing them online. So it does hurt. Uh, obviously, um, people are paying more attention to the elephant in the room, rightfully so. People are wondering how they're going to pay their bills, how they're going to put food on the table. Just staying healthy is a concern. And so oftentimes other issues, especially ones that people view as longer term issues, get put on the back burner. And that's what's happening right now. And there was a study actually in 2012. After 2008, uh, we saw a big downturn in the concern that people had in climate change. And there were a lot of theories for that. But this study found that it was because people had economic insecurity. They had to worry about the short term and they couldn't worry about the long term. And I am concerned. And I will tell you that a lot of people in climate circles are very concerned about whether or not there's going to be much ambition to combat climate change over the next couple of years until we get past this big hurdle. All right, so let's talk about fossil fuels. How is this pandemic impacting that industry? Yeah, so it's been a disaster for oil, obviously. First of all, we had Russia and Saudi Arabia in a battle. They, uh, you know, really uh, pumped a lot of oil into the supply. So there's a ton of supply. There's not much demand right now. That tanked oil prices. On top of that, obviously, the virus tanked oil prices even more because of the lack of demand. And so this has been a really big problem. Um, you know, in the short term, what it's going to do is lower gas prices. We're already seeing that. There's obviously going to be a spike in demand for gas, and there's not going to be a zest for sustainable solutions like solar and wind probably in the next couple of years because of that. If you can get something else cheap, the demand for solar and wind aren't going to be as high. However, in the long term, you know, oil has proven to not be a reliable investment. Banks are realizing that. Investors are realizing that right now. 
this could very well be, and I've heard this from experts, be the beginning of the end of the oil and fossil fuel industries, at least some of it. Uh, and that's because, you know, what bank would want to invest in something that's so volatile and something you can't rely on? So in the longer term, this could be good news for climate action. In the short term, it's not. Finally, Jeff, how could this pandemic have a positive impact on the way that we work? Yeah, so obviously, I think a lot of companies are realizing that that work can be done effectively from home. So there'll probably be a lot more telecommuting. Uh, there'll probably be a lot less demand for uh, office space. Uh, people will be driving less. There'll be lower emissions. But I have to tell you, Elaine, that is just a drop in the bucket. We need true system change, big change. I call it Herculean change in order to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. But here's the good news. And we don't Sometimes we don't think about this. We always think about going back to normal. How about we go back to better than normal? We can build a better life for ourselves with better jobs, a cleaner atmosphere and cleaner water. We can see what can be done if we take the pedal off the metal, if you will, take our, our foot off the gas, if you will. Um, life can be better and it certainly will be better if we take the necessary steps and head towards a sustainable future with wind and solar, so on and so forth. But we have to think out of the box, we have to be brave, and we have a lot of work to do. All right, Jeff Beardelli for us. Jeff, thank you. You're welcome.